What's up, guys? Welcome to the garage. What's up, guys? Welcome to the garage. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the garage. What's up guys, welcome to the garage. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of soldering. Now, changing the uh, connector on my Teton uh, from Latrax. I thought let's do a little video just to show you. Uh, I've seen recently quite a few um, pictures, posts, videos on soldering and I'll be honest with you, I've seen some uh, quite interesting sights as well. Now, I'm an aircraft electrician by trade done a little bit of soldering in uh, the past 20 odd years um, and there's definitely some uh, some easy techniques that you can learn you're not going to learn all that in this uh, this short video but hopefully I can just give you a few tips uh, to help you to give you the opportunity to do stuff like making your own um, leads if you're running twin batteries making joining leads if you're putting extra electronics on stuff and just generally being able to make your own connectors up uh, and change the connectors on your batteries. Anyway, I'm going to go over the common connectors that are used in sort of most RC stuff, which is your Dean's connector, your, your XT60 connector, um, and then we'll touch briefly on the XT90, however, um, we we'll only just touch briefly on this and I'll, I'll give you a few tips when you're uh, soldering them. So the first thing you really want to be doing is looking at what soldering iron you're going to get. Uh, you can get these cheap ones. This is a 25 watt um, iron. This is a 50 watt and this has got some adjustable temperature on there. There's no, um, no gauges on it. It's literally uh, just a colour graph there. So you can adjust the temperature on that 50 watt. And then we've got this one here, which is 75 watt, and you have got a variable temperature all the way up to 480 degrees, I believe. Uh, that's centigrade, which is uh, 900 Fahrenheit. So it gets pretty hot. I always set it to 400, or most of the time, 400 is my magic number. Some people might argue that's too hot, um, but for me... That's what I work with, that's what I've always worked with when I'm doing stuff at home. And it will take you a little bit of practice to work out what the best thing is uh, for you or what you're more comfortable with uh, doing. So the stuff I'm going to show you in this video, um, it's not, like I say, I'm an aircraft electrician and if you're doing work on an aircraft, you definitely need to be uh, paying attention to what you're doing. You will find in this video that uh, I expect some of you may think that I'm doing stuff wrong. However, uh, for radio control stuff, as long as you've got a good connection, that's probably your uh, your biggest thing. A good connection between the cable and the connector, uh, and you're all good. The sort of solder that you use. Now, for me, again, personal choice, I use a 6040. Um, that's 60 alloy and then 40 lead. And it's got a rosin flux um, within it, so it's got a a uh, flux core you can get lead free solder but i'll be honest with you uh it's really hard to work with get stuff get solder with lead in it wash your hands after you've used it don't breathe the fumes in and you should be good um but yeah this is my choice 60 40 there's loads of different options out there and um, do a little bit of research have a look around and see what works best for you so soldering irons solder and then then you need to sort of look at stuff like what you're going to be stripping the wire with. And to be honest with you, again, in this sort of environment, just some cheap wire strippers are absolutely fine. You can get some really expensive ones, like the automatic ones, but these are fine. You can do all your different wire gauges there. And the same with this one. You can set all your different uh, wire gauges and stuff up. It's fine for what you want to do. Now we know what soldering irons we need. Uh, the highest wattage, the reason I talk about wattage rather than temperature as such on a soldering iron, the higher the wattage, the easier that heat transfer is going to be. You could have a soldering iron that does 400 degrees, however, if it's a low wattage, as soon as you touch something like a big sort of XT90 connector, uh, the heat transfer on here is going to absorb all the heat. 
and yet a soldering iron is not going to have enough um, power to then keep that heat up. So um, wattage is the most important thing um, over temperature. Right, I've bored you enough with the theory behind it. Let's get some soldering done. So I'm changing the connector on this uh, Latrax. So first thing, I, first thing I do is just snip the old one off. And then we're going to talk about tinning. If you're changing a connector on a battery, uh, make sure, or good advice, uh, cut one first, solder it, and then cover it, and then cut the second one and do that. If you cut them both off a battery and they short out, um, not so much with uh, a nickel metal hydride, but a lipo, you may end up uh, destroying it or getting quite a warm hand. Anyway, you're on the ESC, so it's not a massive issue. So cut the cable, strip it to the length you require. We're putting an XT60 connector on here, so um, they are marked up positive and negative. So the positive side is this one. Slide the cable in and just make a mental note of how far it goes in. And then you'll know roughly how much you've got to strip off for it. So strip the cable. Uh, like so, and then we're going to tin it. So the reason you tin stuff uh, is to make it much easier to get a good connection once you decide what you're soldering it onto. So with your soldering iron, I always use a chisel um, tip. Now a chisel tip um, is ideal for pretty much everything. You get different styles, you get different sizes, different types. This is like a medium one, and this is going to be perfect for this sort of job. You get blades, and you get points and all sorts, but the chisel tip is the one you want. Always make sure you clean the tip first, uh, make sure it's clean. And then what you're going to do, you need to put a tiny bit of solder on the uh, iron. So a little bit of solder on the iron and that's going to help heat transfer. And then all you've got to do is touch the soldering iron on the bottom of the cable and use the solder on the top. Once that heat transfers, you can melt the solder onto the cable, you may have to put a little bit more on the iron, but melt the solder onto the cable and that's all you need to do. It's really simple and if you've got, if you've got a nice hot iron, it really doesn't take long. Count one, two, three, four, five, so six seconds possibly and that's to get a good tin on that cable. So now that's done, uh, we can do the connector. So I use a helping hand, um, which is one of these, and these are really, uh, really good and make the job so much easier. Tinning the connector is exactly the same really as what we're doing with the cable. Make sure you put a little bit of solder on your iron just so you get that heat transfer. Hold it on and then just touch the inside of the connector there and let some solder drip into it. And then do the same at the other side. I've seen people fill these little buckets right up. You really don't need to fill them up. Um, just put, you saw there, a couple of seconds, just enough to flow in there, and that will give you a good joint. This is the bit that everyone forgets. Um, I've got some caps for these XT60s. So stick the cap over the cables, push it all the way back, and then also don't forget your heat shrink. So put the heat shrink on. Again, push it back as far as possible um, so that the heat transferring over doesn't shrink it. Adjust your helping hand so it's in a decent position like that. Get your iron, remember to clean it. Put a little bit of solder on it. Get it into a comfortable position so that the metals, so they're both touching and then hold the soldering iron, get that heat transfer. The solder will melt and then solder, you'll see the solder melting on the cable. Uh, just hold it, pause for a few seconds, let go. Wait a few more seconds, and then that's a, um, a good solid joint. Now I would leave that and I'd be quite happy with that. I know some people like to fill it up and put a bit more solder on. Nothing wrong with doing that if you want to do that. But for me, um, that is a good, a good solid connection. You can just about see the cores of the cable. Um, which is fine, absolutely fine, no issues at all. It's not coming off uh, and it's a solid connection. But if you want to fill it up some more, to use a bit more solder and then just 
hold the solder in there, warm it up as we've done with tinning and just fill it up some more. But that is not going anywhere. Remember, it's really important to get the right polarity on these. Um, otherwise, you might do some damage. So you saw how easy that was, seconds. It's all about tinning, uh, tinning the cable, tinning the connector, and just getting the right temperature on that um, iron. It's a little bit more solder in that joint, and but again, uh, good solid joint. It's not going anywhere. So make sure the flame doesn't touch it, otherwise it's going to um, start burning it, but get some heat under it. One good solid XT60 connection done. Appreciate this video has been dragging on, so I'm just going to quickly uh, give you a few tips um, to do with the XT90s. Now these need quite a bit more heat uh, than the 60s and the Deans. Uh, definitely recommend putting the connections together. Uh, like so if you're doing a fresh connector don't do that if you've got a battery connected to this end but if you uh, if you're just doing and just tinning initially definitely put a spare um, a spare female or male equivalent on there get the soldering iron as hot as you can if it's a variable one get it as hot as you can and you need quite a bit of heat on this one so get quite a bit of solder on the iron hold the iron on and then Push the solder just in and you should see it, it should start flowing and flow down into the connector. Um, again on these XT90s, put a little bit more solder in there than we did on this XT60, a little bit more solder in there and then when you've tinned the cable to put in there, um, the heat transfer, because you've got a bit more solder, it should flow a little bit better. And that's my tip for XT90 connectors. Dean's connectors can, can be quite fiddly. Um, I definitely recommend a helping hand uh, if you're using a Dean's connector because uh, they can be a little bit fiddly to hold and get the solder to stick. If you've got a cheap one, if you've got cheap uh, Dean's ones, uh, sometimes the solder won't flow on there very well. But anyway, uh, tin or put some solder on your iron, hold it onto the bottom of the Dean's and then just touch the top there and just coat the Deans with a decent, you can see there's a decent blob there. So a good solder joint will be nice and shiny like that. If you use lead free, uh, sometimes it can be a little bit dull and not very nice. Right, so finally, before we finish the video, I'm just gonna quickly show you how to uh, easily put a cable onto a Deans. This is where tinning comes into play that. I should be able to hold that on there with an iron without putting any more solder on it, and it should stay on. So hold your iron underneath, put the cable on top, wait for the, uh, the solder on the cable to, um, you'll see it start flowing. Keep You've got to have a steady hand here. Keep it on until it's uh, completely set. And there you go. There is a Dean's joint. And there is a decent solid joint. It could be a little bit better that. It's a little bit scruffy, but um, put a bit of heat shrink over that. And that's a good solid connection. And then just do the same for the other side. That's it, guys. Cheers for watching. Um, if you want to see how to solder in two minutes, just look up here. Any questions, stick them in the comments. Happy to answer. Cheers for watching. And I'll see you next time.